Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight, I'm Peter, that's Tim, and we talk about horror movies. And mm -hmm. it's still October, it's still the month of Halloween, we are celebrating by lots of extra episodes, but now we get into the meat and potatoes of the month. This is going to be Halloween 2, which of course is directed by Rick Rosenthal, came out three years after the original, primarily set at a hospital uh, in Haddonfield, and it's a continuation of the night. It's the same uh, same evening that the first film took place in. Spoilers, of course, for the movie. One thing I do want to point out, though, now, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm dropping some trivia for you here before we even get started talking about whether or not Ooh. we like the movie. But I just want, to put, exciting. I want to put you in the right uh, frame of mind. And I know this just from, it was the audio commentary track, I believe, on the first Halloween, where I got this tidbit from John mm -hmm. Carpenter. Um, he wasn't really interested in doing a sequel, but you'll notice that he's still uh, credited as the co-writer of the uh, film. He said, and I quote, and I'm, well, I may be misquoting slightly, but this is the gist of it. The only thing that got me through that screenplay was lots of beer. <laughs> of course, it, it kicks off right where the first one left off. I do have a couple of pointers, though, before we get to the movie overall. Okay. I will say the music is definitely not as good as the first movie. Nah, yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> like they they keep the same themes, like it's the same mm -hmm. you know melodies and stuff, but they've re-recorded it in this pretty you know crappy synth sounding thing. And mm. I like synth music. Don't get me wrong, I like synth, but this is a very crappy synth. It's uh, it's kind of hard because the first uh, movie had such a, like an iconic soundtrack to it, and y you know you can tell that it's kind of missing that like Carpenter touch on this one. Yeah, it's like someone took the themes and re-recorded them, and it's just missing something. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's unfortunate. But uh, that was the first thing I wanted to point out. Um, and, of course, we'll talk about how the direction's a little bit different. But uh, I do really like the opening titles otherwise, though. The, uh, the pumpkin that slowly forms into the skull, or opens up into the skull, I should say. Yeah, uh, I'm actually glad you mentioned that because I really like that too. It's uh, it it just kind of looks cool. It's like you know, uh, very simplistic, like just like a plain black background with you know a uh, you know a uh, jack o' lantern, and then it kind of slowly fades into it, and then it splits open and he sees a skull. But it's just like a really cool effect and very simple, but really interesting and looks cool. Yeah, it looks really good. And yeah. even though it's not as good a recording, it is still the main theme playing. It's still that you know, Halloween theme, so the whole thing mm -hmm. kind of does get you right in the mood for some Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, although, before we even get to the title sequence, there's, there's a great, uh, like, because Donald Pleasance, you know, uh, Loomis uh, runs mm -hmm. downstairs and, he, you know, he touches the ground where Michael Myers, you know, landed <laughs> at the end of the first film, and, yeah. like, this neighbour runs out next door and uh, says, what is this, some kind of prank we've been trickered to, <laughs> to death tonight yeah. like, first of all that is a weird statement in and of itself but then <laughs> then dr loomis turns around and says you don't know what death is and yeah. that, that's when it cuts to the, the opening titles i love that so much it's just uh he's, he's so like he's like the crazy man like pro like you know like warning of the danger but at the same time he's such a cynical ass it's it's kind of wonderful yeah. um it, it's it's kind of like it, I, I don't know. It, it's like it's oddly appropriate, but it is also like weirdly like that guy has, would have no idea what he's talking about. It's like it, it seems very strange out of context. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to get those out of the way before we talked about the main plot because it's that kind of is like a it's kind of separate almost to yeah. the, the main plot. Uh, so just this one is is that Michael goes like. Laurie goes to the hospital and Michael sort of mm -hmm. follows her there. Uh, on the way, we see where he gets his knife. Uh, the old couple watching Night of the Loving Dead. Yeah. And we see him kill oh, one. I wonder why they're watching that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a recent review, actually. Night of the Loving Dead, of course, is a public domain. So it's actually rather cheap for people to put it in their movies. Mm -hmm. But uh, he kills like a random girl as well who hears about the things on the. F hears about the killings on the phone mm -hmm. and hears it on the radio as well. And I'll. Like that one stood out to me a little bit as weird because it's like such a just a random kill. Like it, it, she doesn't connect yeah. to the rest of the movie in any way, shape, or form. She's just like, oh, it's the opening ten minutes. We need a kill. Uh, yeah, random person in random house. You you can die. Well, I I think in general, like 
kind of something that stands out as like a difference between the first movie and this movie is uh, like in the first movie, it seems like, he, you know, Michael Myers has more of a plan. He's a little more methodical and like it, it feels like the, the kills kind of uh, mean more, I, I guess. Well, as this, it does feel like a little random. Like he he still definitely has a goal, you know, that he that he's trying to do, and he's trying, you know, to make his way, uh, you know, to find Lori and everything. But it, it still feels like, you know, like it, he's also just like kind of doing whatever, like in the meantime, too. See, I feel like most of the ones later on are somewhat justified, you know, in his yeah. plan, if you will. But it's just this one is just like what he's he's looking for Laurie why did he come into this house like why why did yeah. he come in here like because the first house where he got the knife he didn't kill the old couple he just came in grabbed the <laughs> knife and you know went about his business you know yeah um but yeah so so there's a lot of like the police investigate because they've like discovered all the bodies from the first movie and they're all you know they're looking into it Loomis is looking for Michael um Michael's making his way to the hospital and then of course he starts killing people there and eventually it becomes a bit of cat and mouse between him and Laurie uh, Loomis eventually shows up there as well and it all has a bit of a showdown and we'll go through mm-hmm. all of that stuff but <laughs> that's the, the gist of the whole plot mm-hmm. I quite like Halloween too now <laughs> I want to say that up front I want to say that I really enjoy Halloween too and the reason why I want to say that up front is because I feel like a lot of what I'm about to say will <laughs> sound kind of negative and it's probably going to sound negative because it's impossible not to compare it to Halloween Right. and Halloween is my favorite horror movie of all time. It is a goddamn masterpiece. So, you know, well, comparing anything to it, never mind a sequel, is, you know, is going to draw some, you know, negative, you know, right. comparisons. It just is. Yeah, I mean, if I remember correctly, I think when we did the first Halloween last year, um, I I, th- I want to say you gave it, you know, perfect 10 out of 10. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. And I, I think um, it, it's not... Uh, I don't hold it as in high regards as you, but I do really, really love the first one as well. And I think I gave it like a nine or a 9.5. Um, and it's probably just because, um, like I've said a lot of times before on this show that I'm not as much of a slasher guy, but yeah, the first, the first one is like, it's great. And, uh, I actually also really like this one. Um, actually thought it was funny. We both had it like, um, on our top 100 list, like at the exact same number without even, like realizing it i want to say that was uh, 88 uh yeah is he like 88 or 87 somewhere around there yeah so, um, so, somewhere not. but yeah no it, it is good uh it's yeah it's just like you said it's uh a sequel that's definitely not as good as the first one yeah and it's but- hard to yeah, not compare. Like, I think there's a lot of good moments in this. There's a lot of good <laughs> tense moments where the, the direction's actually really good. And it's not... Because Rick Rosenthal, believe it or not, went on to direct Halloween Resurrection, amongst other things. So, <laughs> you know, this is definitely one of the highlights of his career. And mm-hmm. I think there's moments in this that you can tell, oh, it's not as good as Carpenter. But there's other moments where, oh, that was actually quite good. That was quite smart and inventive. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm thinking primarily there's a scene where he's or- Mike- Michael's already killed a bunch of people and there's the sort of the blonde nurse left and she goes oh, yeah. to where the security guard office is and mm-hmm. the camera looks up at her it looks down at the monitor mm-hmm. and we see michael walking on the monitor yeah. it goes back up to her she's like went away one side and came back and looking for him and then she decides to walk back off the other way and when she walks back off the other way the camera goes back down again and we see her walking to the same location on the monitor that we just seen michael and it's just the perfect little build up of like visual storytelling. You know, you see yeah. element A is there, element B is there now, and but it, it works really well. And you you get this sense, you, you understand the jeopardy without uh, anyone saying anything, without any you know anything clunky. It's it's very succinct. It tells you what's happening in a very interesting way. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that it, it stays in, like, the same kind of spirit as the first Halloween, um, you know, and that it has, like, uh, there are, like, some pretty good kills and stuff uh, in well, it. There's, there's a couple. I, I wouldn't yeah. say, I'd say some of them are a little bit lackluster. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because uh, I, I think most people remember the, the jacuzzi uh, death scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's... 
not a lot of other ones. In fact, the the, the, the most memorable other ones are actually the guy that they think is Michael for a split second in the cop car. <laughs> comes out of nowhere and rams into him and the whole thing explodes and he just goes into flames. It's been a while uh, since I watched this and I completely forgot about that part and I was like, <laughs> when I watched that, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> like, they, like that, that scene is, is so crazy to me. <laughs> it's like, first of all, it just seems weird that there's like, there just happens to be a guy that looks like just like him. Like, and... No, not only that. Well, I mean, to be fair, in the first one, they set up that the mask is just something they stole from the uh, the, the local costume shop. So it makes mm-hmm. sense that maybe there'll be more than one. So yeah. that's fair enough, even though it looks a bit different, but fair enough. <laughs> but the fact that Loomis is ready to just shoot him on sight, <laughs> yeah. like it, it doesn't even, you know, try like, anything I just, else. I just don't understand why, like, why the guy just doesn't, like, you'll throw his hands in the air like oh wait hey what's going on and then the cop <laughs> so he just car just keeps walking <laughs> yeah the cop car just accidentally rams into him and the whole thing bursts into flames it, yeah. it's one of those moments where it's just like oh that escalated very quickly yeah <laughs> that just escalated <laughs> jeez um <laughs> what, what i feel I... like if i was like loomis like i probably would have been like you know like wrecked for days yeah Yeah. (laughs) but he's like it it seems like i mean i'm sure obviously he you know he has a mission he's determined and stuff he's probably internalizing a lot of it but (laughs) especially when the kids like two friends come up later and say oh by the way our friends missing uh (laughs) he's 17 and like him and the the cop look at each other and they're like oh geez oh dear (laughs) that sounds like that guy we accidentally killed earlier on (laughs) Oh man, um, do you know what's scene I oddly quite enjoy? There's a scene sort of in the because one of the things we don't get a lot of in the first Halloween mm-hmm. is more of the town, like and the townspeople. So I like that yeah. it's at the hospital because like another big. If it's a small town, there'll be one hospital, and it's like it's like another institution of the, the the town. But what I really like as well is there's a scene early on where we meet the the blonde nurse who gets the jacuzzi death uh, later <laughs> on. We see her and a friend going over to their car, and they're just bickering about getting places late and whatever. And they they they, do, they drive off. And by the way, there's a kid in this scene where he's got the boombox over his salt shoulder, but he's listening to the news. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I just thought that was a wonderful, uh, wonderfully weird thing to be doing because you know it's that classic thing where i don't believe anyone ever actually did this out in the streets but movies mm-hmm. have this thing where they have like the, the, the sort of hip kids with the boombox like you know walking yeah. along listening to you know usually hip-hop maybe occasionally mm-hmm. something else but instead he's walking around listening to the news about <laughs> about a serial killer you know it's just yeah. it was so weird to me <laughs> and then he bumps into michael and the music kicks in mm-hmm. and that was a little bit clunky <laughs> but i do like mm-hmm. Because I, do you know it's funny. I always remembered this scene, in that I remembered Michael walking, and I remembered the boombox kid, and them bumping mm-hmm. into each other. But I, I never actually remembered the purpose of the scene, other than interest in the nurse. But you actually see him walk past the sign that says the hospital's, you know, uh, you know this. Yeah, that's that's where the scene ends. He, he walks past yeah. the sign that says the hospital's this direction, and I thought, oh, okay, I actually kind of like that. There, it, it's following his. His like sort of mental logic, his path, if yeah. Well. Uh, his little, uh, I don't know, journey, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that said, we do need to talk about the reason why he's going after Laurie, and I feel it is easily the worst part of the movie is the clunky as hell retconning of. Oh, by the way, she's his sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this is just ah. Oh. Yeah. Um. I I don't know. I, I guess. Well, I don't know if I have a huge problem like with the storyline, but I guess it was kind of weirdly like expositiony. I I think the problem for me, I don't have a problem with her being his sister. Yeah, but I feel like if because it was never even there's not even a hint of it in the first movie. There's not even like it clearly mm-hmm. was not an idea in the head of Carpenter when he made yeah. the first movie. So it feels so forced in the second one. You know, this whole idea, uh, the, the the records were sealed so that no one would know, and it's just like, yeah, that sounds like an excuse for why it was never brought up before. It doesn't sound like a real thing. Yeah. Um, especially since, like, they have, you know, they have the nurse from the first movie come in and talk to Loomis and be like, oh, by the way, there was this record that even you didn't get to see, and I know you looked at, <laughs> you looked at everything. Like, they have to, like, mention the plot hole 
yeah. that he would have like known everything about him. He studied this kid for like fifteen years. He would know yeah. everything. They had to come up with a reason for why he wouldn't know this, and it just. Uh, I don't know. It just it feels really clunky. It feels really retconny. Yeah, it, it's just it it, uh, it it it's like shoehorned. Especially since uh, Laurie has like a memory of meeting him as a kid, which I which yeah. is the that's the line that's too far. It's like no 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 no. Like <laughs> how how did she have a memory deep within of meeting him as a kid, but not know that she was part of the Myers family? Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's just, it's so clunky, and it's, oh, it's such a shame. It's such a shame. Yeah. But don't get me wrong, like, I, I, when we get to Halloween 4, we'll find that I quite love that movie, and of course it continues the idea that Michael wants to kill everyone in his family, and again, they, they keep it going in Halloween H2O as well, because uh, he's, like, trying to hunt her and her son, but mm-hmm. it it just, it's just, the forcing in of it here is very clunky, and it's, it feels like it's, you know, like, like I say, a retcon. And in the most negative yeah. way possible, it is a retcon. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> so that that would be my main complaint. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'd I'd also speculate as to why is this hospital so like quiet? <laughs> like, there's no one around other than like three nurses and the two, you know, EMT guys. Are they even EMTs? Mm-hmm. Uh, I suppose it's not. It's more like the coroner. Or what? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. They're picking up dead bodies rather than... Oh, wait, no, no, because they get Laurie. Because <laughs> they get Laurie. So maybe... They pick up Laurie, so I guess they are more like EMTs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, well, like you said, it's a small town. <laughs> they yeah, true. Maybe they do both. Might <laughs> double up. Yeah, um, yeah uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe like, they have a lot of people out <laughs> picking up the dead bodies, so it's not mm. a well, ton... It's funny because we we used to we had a friend in the university that uh, mm-hmm. that lived in a very very small town like it was ridiculously small, and mm-hmm. I visited there once and it was like the fire station, mm-hmm. um you know a fire station typically and even you know like it'll have like you know three to four like big doors where the the trucks come out yeah you know their fire station had one, <laughs> and it really made me laugh and. Uh, <laughs> I, I always used to joke that there was like one guy who was like the uh, the phone operator for everything in that town. He was just like surrounded by phones, and it was like if you phoned, I don't know the, uh, the you know the local park services, he'd be the one who picks up. If you phoned the you know whatever, he would be the one who picked up. Yeah. Interestingly though, uh, two chiropractors for some reason in this one oh. small town. <laughs> yeah. Bad backs apparently uh, huh. in this town, but interesting. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, back to uh, Halloween 2. I, mm-hmm. It's funny, I, I remember a lot of people complaining about this movie and saying, oh, it's mm-hmm. just Laurie being chased around the hospital for most of it and that she is like whimpering and weak the whole time. And I'm like, I was keeping my eye on the clock, right? See, when I was yeah. watching it this time, I was keeping my eye on the runtime. She doesn't even leave her room. Mm-hmm. She doesn't even leave her... <laughs> hey, I'm going to kill that. <laughs> oh, 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 was it a fruit truck? What was it? Again? It's a fruit truck, yeah. Fruit truck. Fruit, yeah. It's not even ice cream. It's not even a good truck. Like, no. God damn, it, Michael, get over here because some <laughs> fruit employees for you to butcher. It's a bane of my existence. Oh dear. But yes, anyway, <laughs> um, it's always keeping an eye on the runtime. It's actually like fifty plus minutes into this. Uh, keep in mind, it's a ninety-minute movie. It's fifty mm-hmm. plus minutes before she even leaves her room. And even then, she goes to one other room and stays there while other things are going on. It's not mm-hmm. actually until about the hour mark that she actually starts being chased. Like, it starts yeah. being a thing. Um, so I, th- I thought I'd point that out. Most of the movie's actually Michael going through the other people getting to her in the hospital. Yeah, like, it doesn't feel like a very Laurie-heavy movie. Mm. Um, yeah, because, uh, you know, it's a lot of Michael and uh, Loomis and stuff in the beginning, and then, like, a... Yeah, I feel like even when you do see her early on, a lot of it is just like, um, you know, showing her being transported to the yeah. hospital or kind of I'll, you know being asleep in bed or whatever. One continuity <laughs> complaint I've got is that her hair is a different color than the last movie. <laughs> it's maybe the same, oh, yeah. and her hair is oh. like clearly lighter than it was last <laughs> time. <laughs> just, just you know, it's not a big deal, but it, I couldn't help but notice it's it's when they're pulling her out at the start and the stretch, and it's meant to be right after the because they show you the the scene at the end of the first movie at the start. They they re-showed yeah. you that final scene, so it's really noticeable that her hair is like a slightly <laughs> different color. It's just that, uh, 
Yeah, she sort of like the 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 EMT guy like flirts with her a little bit. He seems to like her. Um, who, by the way, he uh, has the most spectacular, stupid um, scene in the entire movie. He he finds like the uh, the head doctor or whoever. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what I say. He finds the head nurse uh, being drained of her blood. Like she's she's, and that's the other thing actually. Like the doctor and her both like die off screen. You don't see their murders, which is kind of weird. But yeah, fair enough. It's not a big deal, but. Uh, mm-hmm. he comes in and he sees like you know the tube coming down from her arm and it's dripping blood on the floor and then we see how massive the pool of blood is and then like a right <laughs> idiot he slips in the blood and knocks himself out <laughs> it's actually like um, kind of like some weirdly like darkly comedic stuff in this movie like I don't know if, if they were necessarily trying to go for that but uh, I feel like there wasn't as many uh, kind of like comedic moments in the first one as, as they are here. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could argue that the uh, the U.S. Marshal, who's like trying to escort uh, Loomis back out of town, who mm-hmm. eventually like agrees to go to the hospital, like his death feels like really stupid. It's a good death, though. It's a good throat slitting. But, yeah. you know, the way he sort of like keeps going down to Michael and don't go near him. Loomis is screaming yeah. don't go near him. <laughs> it's, it's, it's That's like, actually one of my favorite, uh, yeah, death scenes because you just, you know, like something's coming and... It's, yeah, just, like, him, like, sitting upright. Actually, and... speaking of that moment, do, do you know what my favourite thing about that whole scene is? What's that? Michael walking through the glass door. Not opening oh, yeah. the door, he just walks through the glass. <laughs> like, the goddamn Terminator is wonderful. Yeah, if you ever, like, doubted, uh, you know, if he was supposed to be, like, a force of nature or, or not, <laughs> I think that's, like, the perfect uh, mm. way to encapsulate that. That's it. There's a couple of really nice images in this movie that I really love. Mm-hmm. One of them is just a, is a great shot of Michael walking down the hall of the, the hospital, and it's perfectly mm-hmm. centered, and he's just walking down the middle, and it's just a really nice shot. And the other one that I li- really love is when he gets shot in the eyes. Um, oh, and the, the, the blood bleeding. Yeah, the blood coming down the mask is actually a really cool image. Like it looks really, really creepy. Yeah, uh, I think that looks cool. The only thing, uh, and, and I, was, I was waiting. Uh, to really discuss this but like it is are we really like supposed to believe that like she like straight up shoots him in the face and like he is just like okay like he just like brushes that off yeah it, it's just <laughs> like at this i don't know, I, I just felt like I, I don't know like is he like super like because you know halloween more than me so is there like a supernatural element to him like i i thought later on it, he gets to be more like that but i thought in these like early movies he was still very much like well, kind of a normal dude well here, here's the thing michael is a force of nature the shape is a force of nature right yeah in the first movie it's definitely better with handling this and that it's just suggestive like because the closest you ever come is the ending where Loomis looks down and he's gone. And the look yeah. in Loomis's face says that he knew he wouldn't be there, right? You know, he knew he'd get back up. And that's kind of your... The whole thing is that he really is the boogeyman. For whatever reason, this kid has become the boogeyman. Okay. The sequel, Halloween 2, is definitely weaker in that it, it doesn't it doesn't make it as ambiguous. It's very in your face. He walks through the glass door. He gets shot in the eyes and is like... It blinds him, but he's still fine. Yeah. And that's a legit complaint. If that bothers you, that's a fine complaint. Uh, mm-hmm. For me, once we're out of the first movie, I just kind of accept they're not as good and therefore a bit goofier. <laughs> kind of yeah. thing, you know? Like, okay. and, it, and it is a legit problem. It's a legit complaint. But it's the same thing with any of the slasher sequels, really. They all did this. They all got a bit more on the nose after the first one. You know, like, mm-hmm. you know, Freddy was kind of darkly funny in the first one. But by the, the fourth one, he's like a full-on stand-up comedian the whole yeah. time. You know, like... Um, and it was kind of the same here, uh, but I buy that the characters accept it at this point, no? Because I mean, Loomis mm-hmm. is already shot. I mean, between the earlier at the end of the first movie and th- then this time in the hospital, he shot him like twelve times, <laughs> yeah. and he's still walking towards him. So he's getting no mm-hmm. doubt in his head that this guy is supernatural at this point. Okay. So yeah, that's my. Right, I, I I was just curious if it's um, if it was ever like you know specifically said like uh well i suppose technically yeah. halloween 6 does specifically say a few things okay. but let's not c- count that here okay <laughs> okay because if we're talking about retcons halloween 6 is the most <laughs> retconny retcon in retconning <laughs> history yeah then uh yeah i should say and I'm, I'm not like uh it's not like i 
was terribly upset or anything by yeah. this. Like, uh, it's just like when I was watching, I was like, because uh, again, it's been a while since I've seen this, so I, I, you know, didn't have like a great memory of everything that happens. But yeah, as I was watching, it's just like him getting like shot like in the head, and then yeah, just like so, like his eyes just start bleeding. I was like, huh, would have thought that would work. But at the same time, I do like it that like they are actually trying to do this stuff as opposed to like you know when you watch some movie and like they're shooting a guy in the stomach or something, and you're like, oh, like why would you not go for the head if you? Yeah. Are trying to kill him. Yeah, if anything, I would criticize Loomis for not trying it sooner. Like, true, yeah. But you know, whatever. It, it eventually got there. Do you know what I'm saying? I I actually really like most of the stock stocking stuff, and I love like Laurie running outside and like hiding in the car and just like mm-hmm. hunkering down in that car and hoping that she'll be okay. And yeah. Michael like slashing all the tires and like cutting all the lines so that like, none of the cars mm-hmm. can leave. Like, I liked all that stuff. Um, the one scene that I didn't like as much, just because, and again, I think this is a case where. Had Carpenter directed it, it'd have been a different case. Mm-hmm. But just before that scene where she goes outside and Michael's chasing her in like the basement of the hospital in the main maintenance sort of area, and she runs to the elevator and she's like pressing the elevator and the elevator doors doors are closing as Michael is walking towards. Mm-hmm. I do think the pacing of that scene is really weird, and it makes Michael feel really stupid because. Yeah. He's walking slow, he always does, but I feel like as the door's closing, he's still even he's even reaching up really slow, and he even catches yeah. the end of the door, and it still just feels like he pulls his hand back. And yeah. I think, as much as Michael does move slow, I feel like if the door was closing, he would speed up. I feel like they should have had him be further mm-hmm. back so that he tries to go up a bit quicker as he gets towards the door, and he just misses it. As opposed to this mm-hmm. weird thing where he slowly kind of catches it anyway, but then doesn't... It does- it just, it, was, it just felt weird. It, it felt fake, I yeah. guess. And, it, and it's like you said, it feels like he weirdly like pulls back from it as opposed to if he does catch it, even if it's just, you know, like little tips of his fingers that are inside the door, you'd think that like, you know, he would try to do something like kind of clench up on it and pull it, you know, the door open or, or something like that. But yeah, it does feel like weirdly like he's like, mm, okay, maybe next time. And like just <laughs> like takes it back. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Halloween 2, I think, is definitely a pretty good slasher movie. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's following a, you know, the granddaddy of them all, I suppose. Yeah. And it's hard not to come up short with some things. But it's it's better than a lot of the other sequels, and it's better than a lot of, you know, other slasher movies. So, I mean, it's hard to... Oh, yeah, for sure. ...too much, you know? So... Yeah. Um, the mask doesn't look as good, sure, um, but none of them ever did after the first one. Like no, none of them quite hit the mask again. Is it the uh, same guy that's playing Michael? I don't think so. No, because okay. um, it was Nick Castle, I believe, in the first one, and this one, it was Dick Warlock. That's funny. Both named Dick. <laughs> was it Dick yeah. Castle? Oh, I'm actually, I'm, hmm. I'm not sure now. I'm going to check. I don't want to have people fact checking me. You know, it's kind of funny. I feel like, um, you know, Michael Myers is one guy where, like, um, people don't really seem to, uh, you know, usually associate him with, like, you know, uh, an actor. You know, like, every, like you know, most people always, like, uh, will usually associate, like, um, Jason with uh, Kane Hodder or, you know. Um, that said, though, even Kane Hodder didn't start doing it until, like, the seventh one. So, right. Yeah. You know. uh, and I was right, by the way. It was Nick Castle in the first one. Yeah. yeah yeah nick castle not dick that was where my mistake was i knew it was we were both <laughs> called dick I, I heard i heard uh ick and just put my own content yeah. in there at the start um you might have been uh hoping that there was a, a dick castle somewhere that you could go to <laughs> that was such a poor joke Tony. Um, <laughs> interestingly dick warlock is also credited as patrolman number three so he's one of the cops in one of the scenes in the background or whatever Mm-hmm. It's got to be cameo so you can see his face. Interesting. Yeah, I, I take it your favorite scene in the movie is when it cuts to the uh, the EMTs, like just sitting watching the news, and the guy <laughs> is talking about how much he wants pizza. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was eating some pizza <laughs> while I was watching this, <laughs> and I was like, "Amen, brother." <laughs> uh, you're just saluting the TV, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of, he he's with the the nurse who gets the jacuzzi death, and he he dies sort of in the same scene. Which, by the way, I actually really liked 
how we see that like him dying in the background like the, through the stained glass oh, yeah. you know I thought oh. that was a really cool cool yeah. sort of uh, moment but uh, I just I want to point out that nurse actually she let him talk her into not supervising her entire room full of newborn babies <laughs> What an awful, awful nurse. Like, you showed up late, and now you're letting all these newborn babies go unsupervised while you get jiggy with it in the pool or the therapy jacuzzi. I mean, it was the 80s, I feel like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, jacuzzis were a lot bigger back then, a lot more important. Wait, that's your argument? <laughs> the jacuzzis were a bigger <laughs> thing back then? <laughs> <laughs> the jacuzzi is not really my problem with it, Timmy. The, the problem is the sneaking off to have sex. Not really where or how they do it. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I got no justification for that. Yeah, of course you don't. You, you couldn't. You couldn't possibly. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, but yeah, that's Halloween too. Anything else you'd like to add, Timmy, before we get to ratings? And uh, Timmy. I'm asking you that so that when I ask you the rating, you don't explain <laughs> your rating for 10 minutes. There's your chance to give give your final thoughts of anything we've missed. Um, I mean, I think we covered most of it. Um, one thing I would just like to mention again, like you did mention it earlier, but um, I'll just say it real quick, is I, I really did like the setting. Like uh, I just thought um, the hospital was cool and interesting. And uh, yeah, I feel like you don't see, like, like definitely other movies, you know, take place in hospitals or have scenes in hospitals but uh, i like that that was kind of the the main location and um i don't know i thought that was cool <laughs> of course i should mention the ending actually so uh loomis <laughs> uh, set uh, sets off lots of gas and basically sacrifices himself to explode him and michael of mm-hmm. course having seen halloween 4 i know this doesn't quite work but uh, <laughs> it just puts michael in a coma for 10 years um, which feels like ridiculous retconning but it's like yeah but if we didn't do that then we couldn't have another you know another michael myers sequel so you know right. whatever i'll let you go um and we end how we started with uh, mr sandman playing <laughs> but uh now I, I like halloween too i like it a lot it's not my favorite halloween sequel but it's i think it's a solid follow-up now halloween did not need a follow-up halloween could have just been on its own and it would it works best that way i feel like I almost look at the sequels as like an optional like continuation thing because when we get to four and H two O, I'm going to talk a lot about how this the series actually splits into two timelines and you can pick which one you prefer, but they, they don't coexist together. And I'll talk about that when we get to those movies. I'll be interested to hear about that. In particular, when we get to H two O, which won't be till next year, yeah. but uh, yeah. because that's when the the second one's created because it, it ignores certain sequels before that, but. Yeah. Um, but I almost look at all the sequels in and of themselves as like an optional timeline you can follow. Because mm-hmm. in my head, I think Halloween works as the masterpiece as it is on its own. Like the end of that movie is the ending. You don't know where you went. That's creepy. The end. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it just is perfect. And, you know, I always take some good sequels and I love a couple of them. I'm looking forward to the new one that John Carpenter's involved in. Should, oh, right. Should be better than the uh, zombie travesties. And Dear God, uh, yes. <laughs> not just to hint at what we uh, think of those a year in advance. <sighs> oh, boy. Because we're going to have to do them, Timmy, before we get to the new movie. Yeah, I, I just bought the um, Blu-ray box set, uh, and I was, I've, I've been jumping around watching a lot of different movies during October, and... Uh, you know, we have our Octoberthon list uh, where, you know, we try to reach certain watch certain types of movies and stuff and hit certain goals and so uh i knew i had to watch like some remakes so i was like you know i got the the box set no no timmy uh, no timmy i don't want you to tell yeah. them what you think of the movie now save that for the episode all right yeah I'll, uh, we'll, we'll save it till we talk to uh about it next time but yeah. oh boy yeah, <laughs> That's, that, that... I've, I've actually like watched three Rob Zombie's movie this this month and it it, it has not been a great month. So <laughs> each one just makes sure you just that that tinge more uh, like yeah. it's like you know maybe self harm is not such a bad option you know, after watching <laughs> these three. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's Halloween too, folks. Uh, we like it a lot. So ratings, yeah. ratings. Uh, I think we're gonna give it an eight. I was like, okay. I was thinking like about a seven point five and eight, and um, but 
Um, yeah, I, I think a nice solid eight. I'm actually this may surprise you, but I'm going lower. Okay. Um, I'm going with a solid seven. Seven. Okay. I think it's yeah. fair. Solid seven. I had a really good, yeah. enjoyable seven, but a seven nonetheless. So yeah. that's uh that's where I stand. So yeah, that's Halloween 2. We will be back with more Halloween movies, of course, before the month wraps up. Uh, look forward to 3, 4, and 5 uh, this month, and that neatly does the first half of the movies, so the second half will be next October before the new one hits. Assuming it doesn't get delayed, which it might, but even if it does, we'll, st we'll still finish the rest of the series as it is before then. Um, Wait, so it's supposed to be next October, It's supposed to, supposedly? That, that is tentatively scheduled in for next October, yes. Ooh. So that means potentially next October we could have a new Friday and a new Halloween? Yeah, because a new Friday the 13th is also scheduled for the 13th of October uh, 2017. That could be really fun. That could be fun. That'll be a fun month uh, on Screams After Midnight if we get yeah. new, new sequels on those two franchises. <laughs> two franchises which basically shaped who we are, Timmy. You know, have these new sequels at the same time. And hopefully they're good. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. Let us know what you think of Halloween 2 in the comments below. And that about sums everything up, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Keep watching scary movies. We'll see you next time.